Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I paint this sort of made up scene. It's a semi-abstract landscape of a frosty, misty, late autumn over the South Downs. I'm going to be using salt on the wet paint to create the frosty effects and this can be really interesting if you get the timing right but more on that a bit later. Now I've got um, Milford paper, 100% cotton. It's taped to my board. Um, it's cold pressed, so it's got a nice texture. Uh, my board's at an angle of 45 degrees and I have wet the sky area and some of the foreground and I've given it a quick spray with a mister so that when I apply the paint, I might get some nice interesting sort of random effects from the fact that the paper is dry in some areas and wet in others. Now I've picked up all of my paint on the brush without mixing it and this allows me to loosely apply it to the paper and get these really unexpected and unpredictable effects which hopefully once it's all diffused and had some salt patterns in it will give me um, a really lovely sort of semi-abstract tangled and overgrown garden. The colours here today are um, burnt sienna, perylene green, um, burnt umber and Payne's grey and there might, I think there's a bit of indigo in there as well and I've just randomly applied them to the page as you can see but keeping it very heavy on the left side and much lighter on the right side. Now this is um, just a mixture of um, some of those colours, I think it's probably most likely Payne's grey perylene green and a bit of the um, burnt um, sienna, what, whatever was on my brush, so I've just drawn it across the sky with horizontal brush strokes um, just to produce a very plain sky. Once that diffuses it should give me a sort of more or less flat sky wash I hope. So I'm turning the board around to allow this wet in wet technique to do its work, I can tip it and tilt it whichever way I like according to where I want the, um, the paint to run and you can see that by tilting it the way that I did I'm now creating these kind of the illusions of what could be distant frosty fields negatively painted by all that white space with the few painted sort of dribbles and lines running through it. Now I just applied the salt as you can see it's an ordinary fine grind table salt and I've sprinkled it onto my paint. Now if your paint is really wet it won't work, the water will just dissolve the salt or you might get quite big ugly marks. If it's too dry it'll do nothing. Um, your paint has to be fairly thick but it has to be just damp or just slightly wetter than damp and then what happens is the salt sort of pushes away the pigment and absorbs the water and will often leave you with these little flower type patterns, little snowflake patterns. And I think it really does a good job of imitating um, frost effects. But that's what I'm looking for here. And then for added texture, you can see that I'm just spattering um, the colours into the foreground um, with a stiff bristle brush just to give me some extra texture as it softly diffuse, diffuses. I'm hoping that um, my garden is beginning to take shape and that some of those um, little blobs of spatter will become foreground flowers. And I'm liking the way it's looking at the moment so I'm going to lay it flat and let it dry off a bit. Um, because if I kept it at 45 degrees, the paint where it's wet would still keep running down and would change the look of the painting. I like it the way it is. Now with the corner of a plastic card, or you could use the end of a paintbrush, your fingernail, or a palette knife, I'm running through across the foreground tape, um, creating just some little expressive marks um, to suggest weeds and brambles and flowers and seed seed heads all that sort of thing just to get that started off um, and i'm hoping that as the salt works its magic 
and it takes a while you have to then leave it to dry and not fiddle and fuss until it's completely dry but if I'm lucky then it should give me some lovely frosty effects on all the sort of overgrown brambles and flowers and weeds. And you don't have to use these colours. You can, of course, use any colours that you like and get the beautiful salt effects in them. Um, and, you know, just experiment and play with this technique because it, it's, it's so much fun. And you could make some wonderful Christmas cards this way. So I'm going to now leave it to dry completely. It's completely dry. Um, when there's salt on it, it often takes a bit longer to dry. Um, and I, I don't actually um, use any heat to dry. I'll dry naturally. I've found if you use too much heat, then you can sort of fuse the salt crystals into the paint. Whereas letting it dry naturally, some of the salt will be dissolved. But what's left on the surface, you can simply brush off either with a dry paint brush or a bit of tissue like I did. Now I'm going to go in and just add a few additions to this um, underpainting and hopefully bring it all together into the misty, frosty um, autumn scene that I'm looking for. Um, I have mixed together a Payne's grey and a bit of the green just to sort of um, keep it in harmony. And now I'm going to put in some fence fences. I'm going to bring the fences up through in a slight incline um, and make them closer together and smaller as I get further along um, so that they disappear off into the distance towards the right. I'm going to follow the edge of the unpainted paper because the unpainted paper I want to suggest um, frosty winter empty fields that sort of thing um, surrounded by these trees this is my small calligraphy brush and i'm using this with the same mixture to paint in some sort of fairly stylized winter trees as i say i'm not looking for realism here just for this sort of pretty semi-abstract painting um, I just want to paint these um, interesting shapes that will contrast nicely as sort of strong silhouetted shapes of trees and branches and twigs against the softer, delicate, wet in wet, diffused paint and the pretty patterns that have been created by the salt and the wet paint reacting together. You can have as many or as few trees as you like. I mean, when you're painting this kind of thing, you can never really predict what's going to happen, um, where you're going to get your effects and how the colours are going to diffuse. So keep an open mind. Um, and remember, this sort of tutorial isn't necessarily one to follow along with and try and duplicate, but it's just hopefully to stimulate some ideas and your imagination and to get you trying out different things. These sort of techniques can also be good warm-up exercises or it can be something that which you can do if you don't know what to paint but you know that you want to paint. You can just sort of dive straight in and create these interesting semi-abstract scenes. And you can begin to um, learn to react to the effects that happen on the page to the expected and to the unexpected as well. And then sort of get used to working with what watercolour gives you in a sort of spontaneous way and deciding what would look good in your painting, what would enhance it, and then working with that. Sometimes it's a good idea to make some sort of tracing paper overlays of just simple trees and things like that, or birds or little cottages and then you can try those out on top of an underpainting just to see what sort of thing would work best before committing to the painting with paint. If you're interested there's a full tutorial in two parts 
for this um, painting over on Patreon, which goes into things in a lot more detail. There's much more in-depth um, narration and guidance. So follow the link below if you think that might be for you. So just bringing some tiny little fence posts across and those small fence posts and the smaller trees, I'm hoping will just give us that look of distance as we look out across the valley and the frosty fields. It's quite an organic process, I think, working on a, um, a made up painting that you allow to develop spontaneously as you go along. Um, so what I'm doing is as I've painted each part, I keep stepping back and then looking at the painting and trying to work out what else it needs. And I've decided that it needs a few slightly larger trees just over on this side um, by the fence, just to um, add some sort of harmony and continuity to the tree line. And with that, I'm finished. So I'll remove the tape and have a look and, and see what I think. Once the tape's removed and you see it with a nice clean white border, it really um, helps you to see the painting looking a lot more finished and almost as if it's in a frame. And it's almost as if you're looking at it with fresh eyes and then you can see if it's finished or not. And I think I need to just add a few more sticks and twigs and branches and things, maybe strengthen up the fence posts a bit and a few of the branches, um, add some more of them here and there, just so that I can sort of link this um, hedgerow and tree line for the woods on the edge of this farmland. But I think I'm nearly there. It doesn't need too much more work. Obviously, yours will be different. So, um, you know, do what your painting needs. You know, make whatever adjustments you think it, it could do with at this point. Or if it doesn't need any adjustments, then, then that's brilliant. You've got a finished painting. So I hope that was helpful and I hope that you'll give it a try. Um, salt can be really effective for all kinds of um, situations in watercolour painting. So as I say, remember, um, just wait until your paint is only just damp, um, not too wet and not too dry and experiment a few times on some scrap paper or the back of an old painting so that you can um, get used to how long it takes or what the paper looks like when it's at the ideal state to produce either those pretty little flowers or the slightly larger sort of ones that look like um, sort of frost, fingers of frost all over the hedgerows and the bushes. Well, thanks so much for watching. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.